Welcome to week 9 of the VDL. This week, the Indianapolis Infernapes are taking on Starry, coach of the Evergrande Eclipses. Our team is currently 13th overall, 2-6, and six, so it's not looking too good. I doubt we make playoffs, but I'm still going to put a ton of effort into this because Starry is 2nd overall, and if I beat him, I can have like some effect on the top players, and that could you know change things for them, so I don't want to just blow this game off. Alright, so let's break down the team and get into the battle. My opponent's team is Garchomp, Hisui and Gudra, Dragapult, Dragalgi, Noivern, Latias, Komo-O, Duraludon, Curum, Drekluk, and Dreepy. Starry is second overall, so he decided to pick up the whole Dreepy line on the last week of transactions, which I thought was really funny. I doubt he brings Drakelok and Dre uh, Dreepy, but he might. I'm a dark team though, so I I'd be shocked. So the first Pokemon we have here is Greninja holding a Choice Scarf. This is to outspeed the entire team. The two Pokemon that outspeed Greninja are Noivern and Dragapult. And we threaten those with an Ice Beam. Low Kick is for the Hisui and Gudra or for the Curum. And then Dark Pulse is just for like a move to hit overall. The only thing that resists it is Komo-O. So it's a pretty safe click if I'm not sure whether to click Ice Beam or Low Kick. And then U-Turn is just to switch out enough speed to outspeed Choice Scarf Latias. Next up, I have Dual Screens Morgrem. We also have the Dazzling Gleam on there. This hits the entire team and then parting shot is so that we can switch out there's no dark type on the opponent's team so we have no immunity to prankster so i won't have to worry about that this does switch into latias as well pretty easily so i'd like to keep this alive as long as possible it doesn't have any recovery though so i don't imagine it being like alive the longest maybe twice it can set up screens but we'll see third we have late game king gambit iron head does a ton to the coma oh so i wasn't too worried about having a psychic move and then we have knockoff and sucker punch with the black glasses to do as much as possible like i said this is like the last thing I bring out. I know I say that a lot of weeks where I'm like, I'm going to bring this out late game and I bring it out like mid. This is the last thing hitting the field. This has no other purpose besides late game just winning. Next up, I have defensive Ting Lu with spikes and whirlwind. This is just to try to wear the team down early on. Earthquake and ruination with a citrus berry just to try to get a little bit of health back with enough special defense to take two Kyurem ice beams. Next up, we have Meow Skirata with a heavy duty boots. This is so it can switch in and out in case Garchomp has hazards or Dragalgi sets toxic spikes. And we have play rough to hit just as hard as possible sucker punch in case I need to take out the Latias or the Dragapult if it gets set up and then low kicks for the Gudra you turn to switch out last but not least we have Sableye dazzling gleam encore thunder wave recover same thing as Morgrem nothing is immune to the encore and thunder wave uh, only thing that is immune to thunder wave is Garchomp but I'm not like super worried about that and the dazzling gleam is just to hit all of my opponents Pokemon if you enjoy leave a like subscribe and I will see you guys in the battle all right here we are with the battle my opponent brings Como O Dragapult Algi, Curum, Noivern, Gudra, and Garchomp. From looking at this team, I have a feeling that that Como O is a com uh, not Comonium Z, but uh, Clangorous Soul with Throat Spray. I just I have a feeling because just looking at this team, there's no like real setup sweepers unless it's like a Sword Stand Scale Shot Garchomp. But I don't see that being the case. I feel like it's probably a Hazard set. I like Sableye lead because I can Thunder Wave anything that's not the Garchomp, and if it is Garchomp, I can maybe encore into whatever it wants to go for like the second turn i can dazzling gleam first turn i like that we're gonna lead we're gonna lead sableye here they lead hisui and gudra so i can just get a thunder wave off here first turn and paralyze this and then i can see what it wants to go for so we're gonna click thunder wave here it would be really nice to paralyze either the noivern or the como or even the curum but i doubt like there's a hard switch into any of those it wouldn't really make sense this is probably the best thing that wants to absorb status this or the dragalgi all right, so we missed Thunder Wave turn one. They just go for a knockoff, so we lose our leftovers. Not the end of the world, but now Garchomp might come out on a Thunder Wave here. Dazzling Gleam does do 26 to 31-ish percent if it's an offensive Garchomp. It might be worth clicking just to figure it out. I don't really want to go Morgrem on this just because it has some steel moves and it would do a ton of damage to me. Ting Lu also isn't the worst option. I kind of like that a bit better than staying in here yeah i'm gonna go ting lu here garchomp does come out here considering his entire team is at full hp ruination is just safer than going for earthquake especially since noivern can easily switch in i could also go for a spike here i'm gonna go for the ruination get half damage off on anything goes for the toxic so that's kind of annoying ting lu doesn't appreciate toxic but 50 percent on garchomp is a ton of damage which is really nice i'm gonna go for a spike now try to get some hazards up it'll chip down that gudra chip down the dragalgi they also get their spikes up so i have no way to remove those so if i can pressure 
them to defog it's probably the better option so i'm gonna just keep setting up spikes now uh, i have my citrus berry that's gonna pop at some point too so i'm not like oh, really really worried about the toxic i might switch out after this spike into um meow scarada and try to force out this garchomp all right they earthquake it does very little damage so all right that's starting to do a lot the citrus berry goes off which is nice so now we're above half i think i go meowskarata here because if they earthquake again it does a decent chunk um actually let me find out if this is offensive garchomp or if it's defensive so that looks like a defensive garchomp like max roll earthquake so meowskarata takes a lot less so i'm gonna go meowskarata here they go Noivern, so maybe they're going to go for a Defog. This is a Speed Tie here. This could kill, but it's very risky because it's a Speed Tie. Meowskarada is really good in this game, so I don't think I want to risk that here. So I'm going to go Sableye. It might Defog here since I have the two layers of Spikes up, and they just U-turn out. Okay, so let's see what they go into. Possibly Garchomp since they know that I have Thunder Wave now. Yep, they go out into the Garchomp here, which is just going to get worn down by the Spikes. I don't want to take another Toxic, or like, I don't want to take a Toxic on Sableye, so I'm going to go out into Ting Lu here. This is in range of Earthquake, possibly a uh, very low chance. So I can probably get away with just getting another spike off if I go Ting Lu here, which just seems to be the, the better option instead of staying in. Okay, they Earthquake. We do take one more. Now I just have to decide if it's worth getting another spike up or if it's worth Earthquaking or if I Whirlwind to try to force something else out here. I don't want Noivern coming in on the Earthquake, so I'm going to Whirlwind here since I take an Earthquake and just force something else to come out and take Hazard Damage. If the Noivern comes out, slightly annoying, but if it comes out for free and defogs on a spike, I wouldn't like that either. So I'm just going to force switch this Garchomp out here with Whirlwind. And they go Noivern, so that actually works out perfectly. We force the Como out, that takes some damage, and I'm just gonna Whirlwind again on the off chance that it's, well, it's not Throat Spray, so, cause it's leftovers, but I'm still gonna Whirlwind this out in case maybe they switch. I go down to Toxic here either way, so it's really not, I don't lose much clicking this, cause they probably just knock me out. Special Como O with Aura Sphere. Okay. All right. Looks like Meowskarada comes out here and clicks Play Rough pretty easily. It does knock out this Como O if it's like fully offensive. Uh, no, with with Protean, it does a lot more actually. So yeah, we're going to go for Play Rough here. It does a ton to pretty much anything that wants to come out, even the Gudra, which uh, this into Low Kick would do quite a bit as well. All right. So they sack Garchomp here. Hopefully we hit. We do. Okay. Uh, probably see Noivern coming out here. Maybe Dragalgi. Uh, so it's Rocky. Okay. It was Rocky Helmet Garchomp. Chomp. Noivern comes out here, but I'm no longer weak to anything that it wants to go for. There's a chance I can die to a hurricane here, but it guarantee goes to a play rough and there's speed ties and I'm more willing to risk the Meowth Karata in the position I'm in now. So I'm going to click play rough here. They just defog to get rid of the spikes. And so hopefully I take them out here. I do. So now Meowth is the fastest Pokemon on the field, along with Greninja as well. So this is looking really decent for me here. Not going to get too excited yet, though, because it seems like the last couple battles, when I get excited that I'm in a good position, I end up throwing. So we just need to keep it together here. Uh, I still have Morgrem, so I can set up screens, which is fantastic. I'll have Meowth and Greninja under screens and King Gambit. Hurum comes out here. If it's Choice Scarf, Ice Beam has a chance to kill. I don't want to go King Gambit on an Earth Power. Don't want to go Greninja on a Freeze Dry either. So I think I just keep Meowth in here. I don't knock it out with Play Rough, but I will do a huge chunk of damage, which I think is just my best play. I don't want to... Nothing wants to switch out and take a hit from this Curum. So I'm going to click Play Rough here. It is a Choice Scarf Curum. Okay, now we know that. I know I said King Gambit was coming out late game, but this is literally a perfect opportunity. Ice Beam does 20 to 24%. So uh, I would assume Como O is coming out here. I don't want to click Swords Dance because I wouldn't do enough with Sucker Punch into it. I can just Iron Head here once pretty freely. I could also switch out into Greninja on anything that wants to, to come out here. What happens if Gudra comes out? I'm going to double out here into Sableye on the Como O coming out, and then I can Thunder Wave it and then maybe possibly go out into Morgrim and get my screens up. So we're going to go save a lot here. Como O comes out and Thunder or uh, Dazzling Gleam is going to do a ton to this as well. I haven't shown that yet, but it two it KOs. Clinging Scales can knock me out, so I do have to be cautious of that. But I think getting a Thunder Wave off on this is probably just my best bet to make this thing a lot less threatening, especially for the King Gambit. So we're going to click Thunder Wave. 
All right, we do get the Thunder Wave off. Clanging Scales comes out, which does knock us out. I'm gonna go Morgrem here because Greninja does not yet do enough with Ice Beam, and I can just set up my screens here. So we're gonna go for Light Screen first since we know this is special. And if Gudra comes out, we can just Parting Shot out on it to lower its offenses and then get Greninja in somewhat freely. And we have Low Kick that'll do a ton to that. All right, Gudra comes out here. We get the Light Screen up. It did show knockoff, so it might be physical, but let's uh, let's go out into Greninja here if they knock off my choice scarf i'm not like super worried about it curum is kind of annoying but between morgrem and king gambit i think i have that thing covered so they do go for knockoff again not too worried about it because if i go for low kick here i can then go for ice beam the following turn so i'm gonna do that low kick does a very good chunk of damage to this gudra uh definitely over half yeah it does it does over like 75 percent give or take depending on uh on the set here Okay, so it's this is definitely a physically defensive. Yep, with body press. All right, I'm gonna make a read. I I want to make a read and go King Gambit here, but if it body presses, that's so bad for me. So I'm like in this weird in between. Um, I'm gonna U-turn, and if they hard switch, I'll know. And if they don't, I'll go Morgrem and let that go down. It's better than just hard switching. Okay, so they stay in. They probably body press again. Let's go Morgrem. Yep. Okay. Good thing I didn't just hard switch there. Like I was thinking about doing that wouldn't have, uh, that wouldn't have went over too well. I'm going to set up a reflect here instead of parting shot out. Dragalgi comes out. This is a bad position. This takes us out with sludge bomb. I'm going to parting shot. King Gambit can come into this pretty freely. It doesn't get a fighting move. The best thing it can hit me with is either probably Draco or hydro pump. It could flip turn out as well. Starry's just got a really good team. Dragon is so hard to break through, especially Hisui and Gudra has been so good for him this season. It's crazy all right we go king gambit here it's probably flip turns oh focus blast jesus christ i forgot about that 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 totally slipped my mind Whew. uh it doesn't do like a ton though with screens up thank goodness so i'm gonna just go for game and go for the sword stance here i have literally just nothing to lose at this point this cannot uh kill me with aura sphere and iron head does knock this out so i'm gonna go for it and i might even be faster since the para we'll see though if it's max speed it is faster but there is also a chance for, for a full para so uh we're, we're in a decent position here with these screens all right, they go Gudra here, which we knock out. So our light screen goes down, which is probably what they were trying to stall out. I do want to get that back up if possible, because uh, the Como O, I believe, does knock me out now with Forest Sphere. This does knock me out too, but I kill this with Sucker Punch, it looks like. So I'm just going to go for that here. Yeah, Curum drops like a ton of bricks. So that's great because now I feel like I can go back out into Morgrem here and get a light screen back up and then come back into this possibly. It's that or I have to risk a uh, a full para and then win with Ice Beam on Greninja, but these are both still at full health. So that's not looking the best here. Mm. Do I chance a full para here and just go for the Iron Head? What do, what's it looking like against Dragalgi? Okay, I'm gonna sack Greninja here, go Morgrem, get up light screen, come back out into King Gambit. I think that's what I like have to do here. Okay, that's what that's the play I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go Greninja here. A full para in any position here, like a full para here would be fantastic, but it, this is the play I think I have to make to win here. Okay, we do get the full para, which if I would have Iron Head, we win, but I'm gonna Ice Beam here. This does a ton, and then I get a chance to set up the screens and come back in. Oh, yes, Vacuum Wave. I didn't know this thing got that. Wow. All right, that changes things. That that definitely changes things. I did not know Como got that. Definitely a DLC 2 or a DLC 1 move because I know that became a TM. All right, get a light screen up. They crit me, so I don't get a, um, a parting shot off, which is a little bit obnoxious here. I have a chance for Iron Head into Sucker Punch to kill, and I think that that's just a safer bet than going for a Sword Stance, because this thing is faster than me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Iron Head into Sucker Punch. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this thing is faster than me, so I probably can't even flinch it here. All right, we do a ton with the Iron Head here, and it does get paired. We were faster, so this wasn't a max speed Como O. Vacuum Wave probably comes out here, does about 30, 35 ish percent, and they get paired. Oh my goodness, King Gambit is gonna do it for us here. Focus Blast doesn't Oko, and it looks like Knock Off just does it. Let's see it though. Come on, Gambit. Can we get a win for the first time in like five or six weeks? Oh my goodness. I, I definitely thought it was out. Barring a Focus Blast crit though, I think think we're all right let me see if it's choice specs though okay if it's choice specs it has a 30 point never mind 
We kill it with knockoff. Oh my goodness. I won a battle. Holy crap. I didn't think it would happen, especially against Starry. Oh my goodness. King Gambit, let's go. Sableye is kind of an MVP though for uh, for those paras. Wow. I I thought I lost that there at the end. After the vacuum wave came out on the Greninja, I was like, yeah, it's it's over. GG's to Starry, great battler. And I'm, I'm really glad that I was able to bring this one out here. It, it makes me feel a little bit better because I've had a hell of a season so far um so it feels good to to bring this one out even if it's a 1-0 king gambit did what i wanted it to do it came out at the end and did its job hell yeah if you enjoyed drop a like subscribe and i will see you all later peace